Welcome back to Backyard Builds. On this, on this episode of Backyard Builds, I'm back on my wagon. Um, so it's now on the rotisserie. We've dropped the front end out of it, um, putting the trans tunnel in it. Uh, also just doing a couple little patches in the floor to get it ready to paint. So I've decided to go with a Raptor liner underneath. Um, the bottom of the car will be black just to seal it up a little bit better and we're going to smooth the bay so that will be probably in another episode but this episode we're prepping for paint and just doing some little patch panels so stick around come along for the ride and so we're out here on the rotisserie so trans tunnels in sand it up like the factory's never flat all smooth so best we can get it um, obviously we repaired this rail so put a new rail in but in turn that meant we had to take out this splash pan so I prepped up a new splash pan there put it in finished up the end of that sill this morning so moving on next patch panel to do will be this one just here so probably try and split it off the inner sill along here and I'll put the dimple back in it so we'll go through how to do that here in a sec um, need to finish welding there that rails punched in so that's a bit of a problem get the welder nice and hot and just burn it right in and apart from that once that's done and this hole and the one on the bottom's filled um, pretty well start putting the bog in the front there and then start wire wheeling to clean all that up dog's life. Look at this. But yeah. Apart from that, it's pretty well rust free now. There's a few little repairs up under there and then up there as well. But yeah, best we can get it. Hey, what are you doing? So you might be wondering why I cut the little square, but as you can see, that's a weld. So this car has had pans in it. As you can see, that's where they've joined it, which was pretty close to the factory joint, but it looks like it was oxyed in and out. So yeah. So that's why that little square is there. That's the weld. So I'll now replicate that panel, sand that off. Give that a quick tidy up in there. Um, try and spray some weld through all the way down in there, just to try and preserve it some more. All right, so got our original piece. I just cut a little patch. So just mark this one little line here, which is where the radius started. So that floor pan's got a little bit of a radius in it, but it's sort of square up here. So what we're gonna do is, I'll grab a bit of tube and I'll set it up. So I'll just grab a bit of tube that's pretty close to my radius. Let's tighten it up a bit more in the vise. in the vice at once. And just sort of roll it in just like that. So as you can see radius fold but it comes back to flat there so We'll have to deal with that out on the car itself. So we've got a panel with a rough little shape in it. So now we need to put a form and form screen pull it flat anyway. Probably be a case of tacking and shaping in the car. What we're gonna use is a chassis hole punch kit. So it's a little hydraulic ram. Um, Little 
500 gram male and female die. So the ram pulls the male through and then shears the steel below. So we'll set it up and we will punch the hole. First we've got to put a 19 mm hole in there. So as you can see, little hydraulic ram, threaded insert, pulls through a hole like that. So goes on, material goes over, does up, pump it down, and then pulls through a little slug. So now we'll do the dimple die. So dimple die is just like the punch, male and female, so with a chamfer. So obviously material goes on, female goes on that, pull down, pulls it flat, happy days. So let's do that now. So as you can see, we'll just pull that form, stay pretty flat, and it's pretty close to what was in there from factory. The only difference is the factory one had a little flat across here, but that's not gonna matter. So we'll now go and tack that in and start getting that hatch done. Alright, so tacked in. Bit ugly up there, but we'll sand that out. It's just because that filler's still on there. It's got like a sound deadener already on it, which is really hard to get off. But as you can see, tucks in nice, just tapped it around. We're nice and flush here. Nice and flush here. And it follows that same body line, which if you know much about Valiance, this is where they actually change the wheelbase. So the bottom panel comes down, the top panel goes around. These connectors aren't in here normally. So they just pushed them apart and spot them at different lengths for wagons, utes, sedans, VIPs, things like that. That's how they got around it. So patches all in, sand it up. Bit of a misalignment there, but it's not gonna matter. Nice in that radius. So next fill up is these. And I've just found some more to fix. So I was a little bit flaky down here. So I gave it a quick wire wheel, and sure as shit, yeah, it's full of mud. So tomorrow's job will be to replace those. Replace that. Probably fix the outer quarter at the same time. But for now, do these holes. All right. So I've got the better of me tonight. Like, it's obviously getting dark. I wanted to cut that and see what I've actually got to deal with tomorrow. So, <laughs> boom, she's full. That is red dirt. But obviously, as you can see, the panel's no good. Won't be able to put the beads in it, that'd be the only thing, but it's neither here nor there, really. This hole can be easily replaced. It was just for a grommet that was meant to let everything out, but obviously it wasn't working. So, all right. What else we got in here? Mm, a bit of nice night. Bit of panel. Looks like half a wood. Oh, windscreen wiper. Yeah, so deep excavation to get that out, but anyway, it is what it is. So my plan was to actually paint this this weekend, but things escalated ever so slightly. So cut this out, going around to my other shed. I made a rolling curve sort of panel. So we'll now fit that up. We can get in the back side here. We can see that it's a little bit off at the back. You can see where it's off at the front. But we'll clamp it off to start with and trim to size. So I'll now set up the three footed monster for the GoPro and uh, get into it. So I started to fit up that panel, had a look at this inner here, gave it a wire wheel, and it opened up a whole heap of holes down there. So we just made up this little patch panel, fits reasonably well, 
so weld that in, sand it off, get it right. Um, I'll then give all the inside a hit of rust converter, keep digging the dirt out of there. For anyone that wants to know, it's one box worth of dirt out of this one quarter. The other side's empty, which is odd. So put this patch in, sand her up, um, get the outside fitting, and then we will put the inside back in. But we'll see how we go. So that patch is now welded in, just sand it up. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is dig the rest of the dirt out and then I will rust convert that and then prime it with some weld through and then we'll start fitting that panel back up again. Bloody wind's picked up, a bit of a pain in the ass to weld in. So we'll see how far we get today. So I've marked the panel out, taken it back off, actually trimmed it up, but we're just about ready to get to the point where we're going to start needing to tack it off. So we'll just got one of these, so just Josco uh, strip it disc, so they're like a, a real porous, like a sponge looking thing, but it's real hard. So we'll use that and just take the paint off, just in that like 25mm strip that we're going to need to. Um, Probably gonna need to make another patch for here. It's got a little bit thin with the drill and pulled the clico through. So, unfortunately, the panel I made was a little bit short for that. Um, so, we'll make another one. But I'll strip it off now and start to fit it up. So, pretty close here on this panel. Um, really nice gap there. So, it obviously needs a little bit here. I'm sure, the center's pretty good. Up the top, it's gonna need a little bit taken off it. Um, and we'll probably take a little bit more off this end just to work it into that gap. But apart from that, it's fitting really nice. The curve's really nice in it. It follows that original shape. We'll be able to follow it around a bit better once we start tackling it off down through here. But we're now gonna mark that. So I actually trimmed it on this radius down here. So it's really easy to sand a radius. Um, and join it back into the original panel. So if that joins on there, I can sand that off. I can build it up nice and high with filler, and then we can sand it off really easily. So we've got the panel fitting up pretty well now. So we're corner to corner here, and we're really good in between the Clecos. So we'll start pushing in the panel, tacking between the Clecos, hammer and dolling, and then we'll start by cutting the top of the Clecos back out, those little tabs, and then it'll be flush. So just going through and then tack between the Clecos, so I just snap that one off by hand. These ones are still attached, so all I like to do is, here with the screwdriver, pry it out off the panel, same again, same again, and then we'll just get the one mil in there and just nick them off with the grinder. So the panel's pretty flush, pulls in really nice, hammer and dolly once we sand it up the first time, we'll go through and we'll tack between all these again sand it, hammer and dolly, so the back side of that panel is still out, so we can get the dolly up in there, just so we can replenish it off. Big help. So the next patch panel is in the wheel arch, so what we've gone and done is we've got this bit of 8mm flat bar, we've gone and traced the wheel arch, so this is the size of my patch panel, but it's got a little crease in it, all the way through. So what we're going to do is pretty well make like a hammer form, like a dolly, out of this flat bar. So what I'll do now is cut it on my bandsaw and um, start hammering it in shape. So now we've cut it. What I'll go and do is I'll give it a bit, a bit of a sand up on the linisher. Put a bit of a radius in this edge as well, just because 
out on the car it's not the hard edge um give it a bit of a radius so it doesn't put a hard edge in that uh in the steel so just mark the patch panel where the radius starts so we just lined it up with the start of the radius i just sanded in it so now all we're going to do is just paint it over with the hammer So just with a bit of trial and error, that radius I sanded in was too big, but we have now made this, which is pretty good, pretty neat. So there are some small imperfections, but they will sand out when I sand the rest of the panel. So I just used the square edge that time. So go on test fit it now. So we've got that patch sitting in there pretty well now. Be able to manipulate it around once we start tacking it in. Again, done on the radius. So I've actually gone ahead and I've already welded this. Uh, a few little highs and lows, but she should be pretty good. But as you can see, by welding down that radius, what I can do is I can then sand that radius back in. It's easier to do it there. You get a nice better weld on it as well, better penetration. So, exact same thing on this side again. So, I'm just going to go through and fix this now. This is just like pitting, so that'll all bog up. That'll be fine. But yeah, place this piece yesterday too. Didn't actually make a video of it, but got it done. So, use silicon bronze in here as well. So, much less heat than making it, but I'm very happy with how that's come out. So, I did get a little bit ahead. Um, I just sprayed everything with primer, but as you can see, that I finished that quarter. We've got that little patch that I just had it there put in. We ended up having to do a second one. Um, I've just got it in primer at the moment, but we're fixed down in the sill, so she's all looking good. Done a couple more little patches up through there. It's been raining heavily here, so I'm going to go and get a hole saw now and punch some holes into that. So, the other thing you'll notice is that there is a wheel up under there. These are the rims that I am wanting to run. So, what we have done is measured up for the diff and the diff width. Um, so it's probably not going to be this low. I would love it this low, but realistically it won't be. Um, so they're actually a 15 inch rim. Um, the tire is one size too big, so it's a 23575. We're going to want to run a 23560 on the back. That gives me a little bit more option in tire as far as drag rate will go. So not that we're going to drag race it, I just think that we're going to need a little bit of extra uh, grip. So instead of boring you, I fixed the sill. There's a few patches in the front of the sill that had to be done as well, but essentially that's where we're at with the wagon. So the next couple of episodes are probably going to be more based around building a 9 inch. Um, this thing is getting a 9 inch just because I can. <laughs> and the Borg Warner was horrendously expensive to rebuild. So quarter fixed, arch fixed, sill's done, and uh, moving onwards and upwards the next thing will be the bay but it's meant to rain here this weekend so chances of me getting outside aren't going to be high um so i'm going to build the diff instead so we're going to go through that process so that will be on an upcoming episode of backyard builds uh thanks for watching please like and subscribe and today's code word let's go wagon wagon's today's code word so like comment share uh, comment wagon for your chance to win one of two sticker packs that we'll send out to you thanks for watching guys see you next week